Long before time had a name, the First Realm comes into existence within the Ethereal Divide. Two beings, the Oni and the Dragons, reside within this realm. The Dragons have the powers of creation, and the Oni have the powers of destruction. Because of their inability to coexist, both sides are caught in a seemingly endless war. A variety of other parallel worlds come into existence within separate locations of the Ethereal Divide, forming the Sixteen Realms. A child, who would later become known as the first Benjutsu Master, is born of Oni and Dragon descent. But when they fight for control over him, he abandons his home realm and travels to a chaotic, water-covered hellscape. This realm is under the control of a sea serpent known as Wojira, who commands the elements of wind and water through the use of the storm and wave amulets. A race of underwater beings known as the Merlopians and a tribe of Wojira worshippers known as the Keepers aid the first Minjutsu Master to fight against the serpent. The battle ends when Niad, the first elemental master of water, merges with the sea and removes the amulets from Wojira's head, sending her into a deep slumber. The Merlopians take the wave amulet for safekeeping and lock Wojira in a temple within Tartarus Trench, while the Keepers take the storm amulet to an uncharted island. Following the battle, the first Minjutsu Master forges the golden weapons to create the land of Ninjago. A group of Oni pursue the first Minjutsu Master and build a temple in Primeval's Eye, but a rogue Oni named Mistake helps the first Minjutsu Master drive his pursuers away, forcing them to leave three Oni masks behind with one of them locked away in their temple. An evil spirit known as the Overlord emerges from the darkness and fights the first Minjutsu Master for the fate of the realm. Knowing that their fight could go on for eternity, the Overlord creates the stone army to turn the tide in his favor. Facing defeat, the first Minjutsu Master splits the land in two. As a result, the Overlord is stranded on the west part of the continent known as the Island of Darkness, and the stone army is entombed underneath what would later become known as Ninjago City, leaving the stone war unfinished. Sentient beings evolve throughout the 16 realms. Ninjago's two dominant species, known as the Humans and the Serpentine, colonize the land, building cities, villages, traditions, and historical landmarks. The first generation of Elemental Masters is born. Individuals are bestowed with an elemental power that is passed down to their descendants and other people should they desire. The first Minjutsu Master invents Spinjitsu, a powerful martial art that allows the user to create a tornado-like vortex. He also creates the Realm Crystal, a gem-like artifact that allows its user to travel across the 16 realms. A woman named Nainiko is discovered and taken in by the first Majitsu Master. However, when he accuses her of stealing from him, she is forced to leave. Enraged, Nainiko begins searching for the secrets of immortality. She learns dark magic and transforms herself into an anthropomorphic cat in order to obtain a relic called the Cat Eye Jewel. She makes multiple attempts to steal it from a group of protectors called the Order of the Felis. A puppeteer named Tanabrax discovers a medallion from the realm Jinjago that can turn people into puppets. He begins converting his village to create an army that he can use to overtake Ninjago. Mamba V becomes the king of the Serpentine tribe known as the Hypnobrai. He and the first Benjutsu Master agree on a peaceful yet fragile relationship between the humans and the entire Serpentine race. The first Benjutsu Master fathers two sons, Wu and Garmadon. Garmadon inherits the powers of destruction, and Wu inherits the powers of creation. The two brothers trespass in Serpentine territory and are imprisoned by Mamba V. They escape their prison with the help of a sorceress named Aspera in exchange for teaching her Spinjitsu. Garmadon doesn't fulfill his end of the bargain, but Wu does. After learning everything she can from Wu, Aspera overthrows Mambo, but Wu and Garmadon defeat her by using forbidden Spinjitsu, a darker and more powerful counterpart to Spinjitsu invented by their father. Mambo V is restored to power, and Aspera is locked away for her sins. The Overlord mutates a serpent known as the Great Devourer with corruptive venom and sends it to the monastery in order to turn one of the first Spinjitsu Master's children evil. This plan ultimately comes to fruition when Wu's katana flies outside the walls of the monastery during a sparring session. Afraid of their father's disapproval, Wu chooses not to go outside, but Garmadon does, and is bitten by the Devourer. Years later, the first Rinjutsu master sends them to the northern ocean to find a magical herb that can cure Garmadon's illness. On their way, they meet Nainiko, who is still attempting to steal the cat eye jewel from the Order of the Felis. She manipulates them to steal the jewel for her, but after encountering the Order, they turn against her. Wu and Garmadon later take a detour to a village, but later investigate the disappearances of several villagers, which turns out to be Tanabrax, who has continued creating his puppet army. One of Tanabrax's first victims exposes him to the sunlight, which kills him. 
Gunradon then uses the medallion to reverse the spell, but the spirits of Tenebrax's earlier victims pass on, having lost their original bodies long ago. Garmadon and Wu's journey takes them to a desert village where a wish-granting sphinx resides within a pyramid. Garmadon sees this as an opportunity to wish his illness away, but he and Wu are trapped in the pyramid's maze and encounter another prisoner named Shazada. The three work together to get to the sphinx, but Shazada falls ill from one of the traps. Wu and Garmadon use their wish to heal her, and the trio escape the pyramid. A family of artists create a painting known as the Chroma that becomes sentient and consumes them except for one. Fearing the painting's unending appetite, she lures in other people to feed the canvas. Wu and Garmanon are able to rescue the family and the victims from the painting and are successful in destroying the Chroma. Ultimately, the Spinjitsu Brothers' quest fails and Garmadon is doomed to one day fall victim to the Venom's evil influence. Before his death, the first Spinjitsu master gives Wu his staff, which unbeknownst to his sons, reveals a hidden message that leads to his final resting place as well as the Realm Crystal. When their father passes away, Wu and Garmadon swear an oath to protect the golden weapons. An evil sorcerer named Hazador builds a network of caverns, dungeons, and mines deep within Shintaro Mountain. Upon his death, his remains are left underground. Years later, a species called the Skyfolk settle on the mountain and build a kingdom on top of the dungeons. Sensei Yang invents Air Jitsu, a powerful martial art that allows its user to temporarily take flight. He teaches Air Jitsu to his students, but also seeks to live forever through the use of an artifact known as the Yin Blade. The ritual fails, and he and his students become cursed to haunt his temple. At an unknown point in time, the Hypnobri evolve and some of their ancestors' sarcophagi are discovered and placed in the Museum of History many years later. A blacksmith from Metalonia grows envious of elemental masters and becomes fascinated with an ancient tree with mystical amber that can ensnare anything including elemental energy. He uses this amber to create the Urn of Enmity to steal fragments of elemental powers. In this way, he creates the artificial elemental power of amber. He attempts to use the urn on Wu and Garmadon, but it absorbs his spirit instead. The pirate crews of Captain Soto and the Jin Nauticon clash between their ships Destiny's Bounty and Misfortune's Keep, respectively. Soto emerges victorious by trapping Nauticon in the Teapot of Tyran and scattering his crew across the Sixteen Realms. Soto later travels across the Endless Sea to search for the Dark Island, but his ship crashes into the coast of Ninjago, killing all hands on board. An inventor named Dr. Julian builds the first android. He names this droid Zane and raises him as his son. Seeking a darker means of guidance, Garmadon trains under Master Chen alongside a dark sorcerer named Klaus. They become rivals when Garmadon cheats to become Chen's right-hand man as well as gaining the title of Lord. Meanwhile, Wu discovers and raises an orphan boy named Moro who is revealed to be an elemental master of wind. Believing him to be the prophesied green ninja, Wu trains Moro who becomes increasingly ambitious. After discovering that he isn't the green ninja, Moro attempts to find the first Minjutsu master's tomb, hoping to prove himself worthy. The Serpentine begin to fear the prophecy of an apocalyptic tyrant known as the Golden Master, and attempt to warn the humans. They are dismissed as a threat itself, and their warnings fall on deaf ears. They take matters into their own hands by using the Great Devourer to drive the humans underground, but it is defeated and sealed beneath the city of Ouroboros. The Serpentine's attempts to help only cause tension between man and snake. Seeking to spread the chaos, Chen convinces both sides to attack each other and soon enough, the lack of trust evolves into a conflict known as the Serpentine War. An Anachondri general named Arcturus takes command of Serpentine forces and wins multiple campaigns across Ninjago. Chen wishes to side against the humans and requests Garmadon to join him. Instead, Garmadon joins Wu and they lead an alliance of elemental masters and humans into battle. A warrior named Mogra defects to the Serpentine in hopes of becoming a king. He attempts to convince Garmadon to join his cause, but he is stopped by the Alliance and presumably executed for his crimes. Chen and Klaus are able to manipulate a few elemental masters to turn against their allies, but the discovery and development of sacred flutes allow the Serpentine War to come to an end. The Serpentine become divided, each tribe locked away in separate tombs, Chen and Klaus are exiled to a secluded island for treason, and Arcturus and the other Anachondra generals are banished to the Cursed Realm. After the end of the Serpentine War, two members of the Alliance, Acronix and Crux, decide to go rogue, believing their elemental powers of time to be superior. Rei and Maya, masters of fire and water, forge the Time Blades, which are used by Wu and Garmadon to battle the Time Twins and steal their powers. The blades are then sent through a rift, but Acronix and Crux allow themselves to go through. At some point, Crux emerges from the rift with the Reversal Blade. 
He goes into hiding and breeds an army of the Great Devourer's progeny known as the Vermilion to exact vengeance on the Elemental Alliance. Rei and Maya find the Reversal Blade and are told by Wu to hide it in the Boiling Sea. But in the meantime, Hinjago is at peace for the remaining decades after the war. During his quest to find the first Minjutsu Master's tomb, Moro dies in the Caves of Despair and his spirit is sent to the Cursed Realm. Ten years after the Serpentine War, a programmer named Milton Dyer creates a video game called Prime Empire, and during beta testing, the game's AI known as Unagami physically sends a player into the game. Because of this, Dyer is forced to shut it down. Feeling alone and abandoned, Unagami completes its own programming and becomes ruler of Prime Empire. The Master of Earth named Lily travels to Shintaro Mountain, studies the Spijutsu first, and slays a dragon named Griefbringer to save the tribes of Geckles and Munts. Before leaving, she gives each tribe the Blades of Deliverance as a sign of hope. She marries and has a son named Cole, who inherits her powers. The Master of Lightning has a son named Jay, who inherits her powers. But marital issues forces her to leave her son at the doorstep of Ed and Edna Walker, who adopt him as their own. Rei and Maya have a son named Kai, and he inherits the power of fire from his father. They also have a daughter named Nia, who is named after her ancestor Niad, and inherits the powers of water. Garmadon marries a woman named Masako, and they have a son named Lloyd, who inherits the power of energy. The Devourer's venom inside Garmadon fully corrupts him, manifesting itself into an undying thirst to destroy. He returns to the monastery to steal the golden weapons, but Wu confronts him. After a short battle, Garmadon is struck down, bringing out his Oni heritage and banished to the Underworld. Upon his arrival, he beats the Underworld's ruler Samikai in combat and takes control of the skeleton army. Knowing that his brother will stop at nothing to claim the golden weapons for himself, Wu hides them in four secret locations, each guarded by a dragon, and gives a map of their locations to Rei, who hides it in his blacksmith shop. A short time later, Crux captures Rei and Maya and forces them to work for him in exchange for their children's safety. Left as orphans, Kai and Nia take over the blacksmith shop, believing that their parents are dead. The Master of Ice visits Dr. Julian and secretly transfers his powers into Zane before leaving. Wu later pays the Julians a visit, promising Zane that they will meet again. In his final moments, Dr. Julian erases Zane's memories of his time with his creator. But Samikai revives Julian and forces him to build vehicles for the Skulkin by locking him in a lighthouse prison amidst the Endless Sea. Knowing that Lloyd is the prophesied green ninja, Masako leaves him at Darkly's boarding school to conduct research on the final battle, in hopes of finding a way to prevent her husband from fighting their son. In the underwater kingdom of Merlopia, King Trimar discovers an abandoned child, gives him the name Benthamar, and adopts him into the royal family. Throughout the years, Bentho tries in vain to earn the respect of Trimar's son, Kalmar, who has an intense hatred for humans and seeks to reawaken Rogira to destroy the surface. Shintaro's ruler, King Vangelis, tasks three adventurers named Fungus, Plundar, and Kogran to enter the dungeons and retrieve the skull of Hazadur so it can be destroyed, but he later decides to take possession of the skull. He condemns the trio into the depths of Shintaro and secretly takes on the identity of the skull sorcerer. He resurrects the awakened warriors and causes infighting between the Geckles and Munts by stealing the Blades of Deliverance. With their relationship in ruins, he enslaves them to mine for Vengestone, a mineral that has the ability to negate elemental powers. He sells the minerals on the black market to ensure the stability of his kingdom. Lily dies of a fatal illness, and Cole's relationship with his father is weakened. In an effort to protect Ninjago from possible threats, Wu begins recruiting four individuals to help him. He finds three of them, Cole, Jay, and Zane. The three train together for a short time as ninja. Garmadon begins the first stage of his plans by ordering Samikai to seize the map from Rei's blacksmith shop and capture Nia. Determined to save her, Kai accepts Wu's offer to train in the art of Spinjitsu. Amidst his training, he meets Cole, Jay, and Zane. Under Master Wu's guidance, the four ninja unite and begin their own search for the golden weapons. They are successful in obtaining three of the four weapons, but Garmadon lures Kai to the fourth weapon as well as his sister, while Samikai and the Skull can take the rest of the weapons to the underworld. Aware of the situation, Wu takes the last weapon to confront his brother. Samikai confronts Wu, while the ninja confront the Skulkin. Samikai beats Wu, but betrays Garmadon, with the intention of using the golden weapons for himself. But their combined powers destroy him, creating a portal to the Realm of Madness. Garmadon escapes through the portal, promising that he will find a new way to possess the golden weapons. Lloyd is kicked out of Darkly's boarding school, and after an encounter with the ninja, indirectly releases the Hypnobrite from their tomb. They eventually betray him, and release the rest of the Serpentine tribes. 
Now led by Pythor, the last of the Anachondri, they launch a ferocious crusade to unleash the Great Devourer. Wu travels to the Realm of Madness to find Garmadon, who helps the ninja rescue Lloyd from the Serpentine. They also discover that Lloyd is the Green Ninja as well as the ruins of Soto's ship, Destiny's Bounty. Zane recalls his past with Dr. Julian, and Cole makes amends with his father. Pythor is ultimately successful in releasing the Great Devourer, only to be eaten alongside Wu. Even with the help of the Ultra Dragon, the ninja are unable to defeat the beast, so they begrudgingly entrust Garmadon to destroy the Devourer with the Golden Weapons. He is successful, but escapes with the weapons. After reuniting with Wu, Kai, Cole, Jay, and Zane promise to train Lloyd to become the Green Ninja. Pythor also survives the Great Devourer, but is bleached out by the experience. Despite its destruction, the Devourer's rampage led to massive devastation in Ninjago City and multiple casualties. A girl named Harumi, who lost her parents in the chaos, grows to despise the ninja and idolize Garmadon as a hero for killing the Devourer. She is adopted into the royal family as the Jade Princess. The Great Devourer's venom seeps into the sewer system and starts making its way underground. The Serpentine, having gone into hiding from the Devourer's rampage, fall under the leadership of Garmadon. He takes the Golden Weapons to the Golden Peaks, where they are forged into the Mega Weapon. He attempts to use it to destroy the ninja, but all attempts fail, and one incident causes Lloyd to become a teenager. Garmadon goes back in time, hoping to prevent the ninja from uniting. Kai, Cole, Jay, and Zane follow him, and are able to secure the timeline by destroying the Mega Weapon. The weapons are shot into space and land on a comet known as Delta V. Garmadon decides to finish what Captain Soto started by finding the Island of Darkness. The Serpentine grow wary of his obsessions and betray him. He finds the Dark Island and meets the spirit of the Overlord, who grants him control of the Stone Army. Simultaneously, the Serpentine launch a campaign against the humans and discover the Tomb of the Dormant Stone Warriors. The Great Devourer's Venom revives the ancient army, and they ambush the Serpentine and cause chaos in Ninjago City, forcing an evacuation. In response, the ninja, along with Masako, set sail to the Dark Island. En route, Zane reunites with his father, Dr. Julian, who also accompanies them on their expedition. At the behest of the Overlord, Garmadon instructs the Stone Army to develop a super weapon that is powered by a corruptive substance known as Dark Matter. Upon its completion, he uses it to plunge Ninjago into darkness and upset the balance. The Overlord betrays Garmadon and leads his army to convert everything under his control. The ninja return to Ninjago with the Ultra Dragon, and in the final battle, Lloyd unlocks the Golden Power and defeats the Overlord, restoring the balance between good and evil and purifying all the corrupted souls of darkness, including Garmadon. As a result of the final battle, Ninjago City rebuilds, becoming New Ninjago City, the center of technological advancements under the leadership of Cyrus Borg. He builds Borg Tower on the site of the Overlord's defeat as a symbol of defiance towards evil. He also builds an android named Pixel, who becomes his assistant in Borg Industries. Dr. Julian once again dies from old age. The Serpentine take residence in the Stone Army Tomb and renounce their vengeful ways in favor of a more civilized and peaceful lifestyle. In an effort to make up for his own evil past, Garmadon becomes a pacifist and is pardoned for his evil ways by the Emperor of Ninjago. But this causes Harumi to become disillusioned with his change of heart. After discovering that the Ultra Dragon wants to return to his home realm, Lloyd allows him to leave, but he is later captured and killed by Dragon Hunters. The Overlord, having survived his defeat in the final battle, infiltrates Borg Industry systems and transforms himself into a digital virus. He creates an army of ninjoids based on Zane's design to hunt down the ninja. With their help as well as Pythor, the Overlord captures Void and steals his golden power, beginning the conflict that was foretold by the Serpentine. The ninja enter the Digiverse to erase the Overlord virus and reboot the system. They are successful, but the Overlord gains enough power to become a physical being. He then sends a group of ninjoids to Delta V to retrieve the golden weapons. They are successful, and the Overlord reforges them into the Golden Armor, becoming the Golden Master. Zane sacrifices himself by latching onto the Golden Weapons, which destroys his body as well as the Overlord's. The ninja grieve at Zane's funeral, but Pixel discovers that he survived and is building himself a new body. The Overlord's spirit also survives and lies dormant. He vows to achieve peace in the dark by destroying the balance between good and evil. Because of the supposed death of Zane, the ninja become divided and go their separate ways. The relationship between the humans and the Serpentine is repaired, and Ninjago City slows down production of advanced technology while Cyrus Borg keeps the golden armor hidden. After rebuilding himself, Zane and Pixel are captured by a criminal empire of Anachondrite worshippers which is led by Chen. 
His plan is to host a competition called the Tournament of Elements, which will allow him to transform himself and his followers into anachondrite by stealing the powers of other elemental masters. Throughout the tournament, Kai becomes infatuated with the Master of Amber named Skylar and the two bond, but he discovers that she is Chen's daughter. The Elemental Masters are able to reclaim their powers, liberate the island, and capture a majority of the cultists except for Chen and Klaus who capture Skylar. With her ability to absorb and emulate other elemental powers, Chen uses her to complete the transformation and the cultists begin their conquest of Ninjago. The Elemental Masters make their final stand against the cultists in the Corridor of Elders. Garmadon sacrifices himself to be banished to the Cursed Realm and releases the spirits of Arcturus and the Anachondra generals who curse Chen and his followers. But in consequence of opening the Cursed Realm, Moro escapes, lures Lloyd into a trap, and possesses him. He takes the first Minjutsu Master's staff and uses its secret message to find the tomb. Meanwhile, Nia begins her training to master her powers of water, the only element capable of defeating a ghost. As part of their mission, the ninja travel to Yang's temple to learn Ejitsu, but the temple's curse turns Cole into a ghost. The ninja and Moro find the first Binjutsu Master's tomb, and within it the Realm Crystal, but Moro recovers the crystal and frees Lloyd from his possession. Taking control of Styx, he opens a portal to the Ethereal Divide and unleashes the Preeminent, the physical embodiment of the Cursed Realm. The city is evacuated, but the Preeminent pursues the survivors. Nia gains full control over her powers of water and drowns the Preeminent, resulting in the destruction of the Cursed Realm and killing all of its inhabitants, including Garmadon, Chen, and his followers. The Preeminent drags Moro to his death, but not before he and Wu make amends. Having escaped the Cursed Realm's destruction, Klaus finds the Teapot of Tyran and releases Nanakan, who tricks him into using all of his three wishes. He, Wu, and Masako are taken captive. Nanakan then uses the Realm Crystal to reunite his crew and they visit his home realm, Jinjago, but discover that it is collapsing due to the destruction of the Cursed Realm. Swearing vengeance, Nanakan obtains the Sword of Souls from his father. He uses it to trap multiple individuals, including every ninja except for Jay and Nia, to raise chunks of Ninjago's landmass in the sky to recreate Jinjago. Jay learns that Nanakan wishes to marry Nia to gain infinite wishes. He leads a group of allies, including Skylar, to infiltrate New Jinjago. They are able to free the ninja, but are too late to stop the wedding, and Nanakan gains infinite wishes, and turns on his crew. The ninja are able to weaken Nanakan by poisoning him, but Nia is killed in the process. As New Jinjago crumbles, Jay makes his final wish that the teapot was never found. Nanakan complies, and erases a majority of the events that stemmed from Klaus's search for the teapot, but this time, he is unsuccessful, and the teapot is lost forever. Only Jay and Nia remember the erased events, and they reconcile their relationship, which is broadcast across Ninjago. Klaus attempts to corrupt a young Yin Yang dragon into a shadow dragon. He is almost successful, but Kai, Nia, and a few travelers encourage the young dragon to transform into a light dragon. Klaus escapes and reunites Nanakan's crew, and seeks to use dark matter to reunite the Dark Island and Ninjago into a single landmass. The ninja travel to the Dark Island in response to the disappearance of several sailors, including Masako. They are separated for a time, but are ultimately successful in stopping the merger, and a vortex draws Klaus to the underworld, while the Sky Pirates are freed from his control. Cole's ghostly form starts to take a toll on him, and Yang takes advantage of this by tricking him into releasing the spirits of deceased adversaries, including Samikai, Chen, and Moro. Joined by Pythor, they each select a ninja and ally to fight and take their place among the living. All adversaries are defeated except for Moro, who warns Wu and the ninja about Yang's plans before peacefully returning to the Departed Realm, while Pythor goes into hiding once more. Yang attempts to use the Yin Blade to open a rift to reclaim his mortal life and release him from his curse, but Cole stops him and destroys the Yin Blade. As the rift closes, Yang allows his students and Cole to go through and they reclaim their mortal lives. The curse on Yang's temple is lifted, and the ninja make it their new base. Acronix returns from the Time Vortex and is confronted by Wu. He beats him and the ninja in a duel, reunites with Crux, and with the help of the Vermilion, they kidnap Cyrus Borg and force him to build a super weapon. The Vermilion also steal large quantities of metal and the city's construction workers to build armor and weapons to supply their army. The remaining Time Blades reappear from the Time Vortex, and the Time Twins retrieve each of them. The ninja and Pixel rescue Cyrus Borg and the civilians, while Kai and Nia reunite with their parents, but Acronix and Crux force the siblings to retrieve the Reversal Blade from the Boiling Sea. They are successful, and Acronix and Crux use the Time Blades to complete their super weapon known as the Iron Doom. 
they travel back to their battle with the Elemental Alliance, putting their 40-year plan of vengeance into action. Kai, Nia, and Wu pursue them, restoring the timeline and forcing the Time Twins to retreat and travel to the future. Wu sends Kai and Nia back to the present with the Reversal Blade while he continues his fight with the Chronics and Crux. With the loss of Wu, the ninja begin their search to find him. As Wu fights the Chronics and Crux, the events of the Reversal Blade start to de-age him. Before he turns into a baby, he is able to fully sabotage the Iron Doom, leaving the super weapon to float through the vortex. He eventually returns to the present and is discovered by Misako, but both are captured by an up-and-coming biker gang known as the Sons of Garmadon, which is controlled by Harumi. The ninja continue their search for Wu for about a year until the Sons of Garmadon steal the Oni Mask of Vengeance from Borg Tower. The ninja reunite to protect the royal family who have the Mask of Deception, but the Sons of Garmadon steal it and the Emperor and Empress are killed during the attack. As the last member of the royal family, Harumi is taken under the ninja's protection. Through Mistake, they discover that the Sons of Garmadon plan to use the Oni Masks to resurrect Lord Garmadon. They also reunite with Wu, who is slowly returning to his original age. Lloyd develops feelings for Harumi, but when they find the Mask of Hatred in the Oni Temple, he discovers her true nature and is taken captive. She resurrects Garmadon, who mortally wounds Lloyd and creates a giant stone monster called the Colossus to begin his reign. The ninja are able to save Lloyd from dying, but he is unable to use his powers. The Colossus destroys Destiny's bounty, but the ninja and Wu are able to escape via Traveler's Tea. Believing that their friends are dead, Lloyd goes into hiding with Nia, Pixel, and Misako. Having no one left to oppose him, Garmadon takes over Ninjago City, proclaiming himself as the new Emperor. A week after his resurrection, the Emperor sends the Sons of Garmadon to find Lloyd, but he and his friends are aided by the Elemental Masters, and together they form a resistance. They infiltrate Borg Tower and send a message to the citizens to rise up against Garmadon's tyranny. The Sons of Garmadon track them down to their hideout and apprehend all except for Lloyd, Nia, Skylar, Dareth, and Mistake, who reveals her Oni heritage. She helps Skylar emulate Garmadon's powers to control the Colossus but is killed in the process. As Garmadon and Skylar struggle for control, she is poisoned by his powers, but Harumi is caught in the crossfire and dies. Enraged, Garmadon sends the Colossus to pursue Lloyd and his friends, forcing them to retreat. Simultaneously, Kai, Cole, Jay, Zane, and Wu are stranded in the realm of Oni and Dragon. They encounter the Dragon Hunters, led by Iron Baron. They are able to escape the Hunters and set off to find the fabled Dragon Armor with the help of a defecting Dragon Hunter named Faith. After crossing into Oni territory, both parties discover that the land is deserted. Iron Baron promises a now fully grown Wu that the ninja will return to their home realm in exchange for the dragon armor. They find the armor, but Iron Baron betrays him and attempts to use the dragon's ruler firstborn to kill Wu. But she turns on Iron Baron instead and gives Wu the armor. The ninja say goodbye to Faith and the rest of the dragon hunters and return to Ninjago with firstborn where they get rid of the sons of Garmadon. After reuniting with each other, the ninja confront the Colossus while Wu and Lloyd confront Garmadon. Lloyd defeats his father and regains his power of energy while Garmadon loses his powers of destruction. The Colossus crumbles and Skylar is healed from the poison. Before he is taken into custody, Garmadon warns Lloyd that the Oni are coming, although not by name, but Lloyd later deduces that it is them. In the Departed Realm, Harumi makes a deal with the Overlord who offers to bring her back from the dead if she pledges her servitude to him. Together, they acquire Vengestone from King Vangelis and use it to create an army. The Monastery of Spinjitsu is rebuilt and the ninja's previous adventures are painted in murals along the walls. The Oni begin invading the realms, including their homeworld. The ninja reluctantly free Garmadon from captivity, and he proposes that they find the Realm Crystal and destroy it to prevent any more Oni from entering. He regains his powers of destruction, and with Lloyd's help they destroy the crystal, but discover that doing so is futile when they are confronted by the Omega, the last Oni warlord. They also discover that the Oni cower before the armor of the Golden Master and use it as a shield to escape. After returning to the monastery, the ninja have the golden armor reforged into the golden weapons. The Omega leads an attack to wipe them out for good, but the ninja, Wu, and Garmadon use the Tornado of Creation to vanquish the Oni. Wu bids his brother farewell, and the ninja celebrate their victory by adding a new mural to the monastery. Mogra, who had mysteriously returned from the dead, takes control of remnants of the Sons of Garmadon and renames them the Red Crows. They regroup in Glim Willow Woods and begin raiding a small town known as Two Moon Village for its power-enhancing team. 
Garmadon also makes his way to the Toon Moon village and sees the tea as an opportunity to conquer Ninjago. He manipulates the villagers into stealing more lilies that make the tea from bear guardians. Meanwhile, the Red Crows launch an attack on the village and burn it down. Garmadon leads a counterattack to drive the Red Crows away thanks to the villagers and the bears. Skylar has a vision of her mother and seeks the help of Camille, the Master of Form. Together they find a tomb belonging to the first elemental master of Amber. His spirit attempts to steal Skylar's power and escape the urn, but she resists and her ancestor is finally killed for good. Six months after the Oni invasion, the ninja explore the Hypnobrite Pyramid from the First Age and indirectly release Asphira from her prison. She steals Kai's powers, resurrects the ancient Hypnobrite warriors now known as the Pyro Vipers, and seeks the scrolls of Forbidden Spinjitsu. She is successful in obtaining one of the scrolls and seeks vengeance on Wu for her imprisonment a thousand years prior. She leads an attack on the monastery, but the ninja used the second scroll to fight her off. Zayn uses the scroll to freeze Asphira and the Pyro Vipers, but she sends a blast from her weapon to hit Wu. Zayn takes the blast instead and is sent to the Never Realm. He loses his memories and is manipulated by an exiled formling named Vex. Together, they take over the realm and corrupt its rulers into Blizzard Samurai. Seeking vengeance for his exile, Vex gives his fellow formlings a chance to join Zayn, now known as the Ice Emperor, but they refuse. He returns with the Ice Emperor to freeze every formling in retaliation except for a young girl named Akita. Back in Ninjago, Wu decides to find Zayn on his own, but the ninja take his place instead. Upon their arrival, they are discovered and brought into a village and learn of the Ice Emperor's tyranny. Lloyd decides to find Zayn on his own, while the rest of the ninja stay with the villagers. On his journey, he meets Akita, who is on her own mission to seek vengeance on the Ice Emperor. Under Vex's guidance, the Ice Emperor sends his dragon Boreal to freeze the entire village except for the ninja. Lloyd and Akita confront the Ice Emperor, while the rest of the ninja fight Boreal, who is destroyed after Kai regains his powers. The Ice Emperor regains his memories, becoming Zane once more, and defeats Vex. Zane restores the realm back to its former state, Vex is banished, and the ninja returns to Ninjago. Unagami orchestrates a heist to which the ninja respond to. They discover an old arcade device that houses Prime Empire. Jay physically enters the game, and eventually other players do the same. Kai, Cole, Nia, and Lloyd enter the game themselves to find Jay and the missing civilians, while Wu, Zane, and Pixel find the game's creator, Milton Dyer. In Prime Empire, the ninja reunite with Jay and learn that they must go through all the levels and challenges to obtain three katanas to face Unagami. They are successful in obtaining all three katanas to move forward, but Kai, Cole, Lloyd, and Nia lose their lives and are converted into energy cubes in the process. Jay confronts Unagami and finds out that he plans to use the energy cubes of the missing civilians to power a gateway to the real world. He eventually reunites with Dyer, who makes amends for abandoning him. Unagami relents and releases the trapped players and programs from the game, and they return to the real world. The ninja later receive an invitation from the Shintaro Kingdom to attend Princess Vanya's birthday. Upon their arrival, Cole and Vanya discover the dungeons, and after warning the ninja, they escape with the Munson Geckles. The ninja are separated on various missions, and successfully unite the Munson Geckles to stand against the Skull Sorcerer. However, he resurrects Griefbringer, and with the reawakened army, he is able to capture all of them. He also reveals his identity as King Vangelis to Cole, Vanya, and Wu, and casts them deep underground. But with the help of Fungus, Plundar, and Kogran, they are able to free the prisoners and liberate the dungeons. Vangelis confronts Cole and destroys the Blades of Deliverance, but is defeated when Cole performs the Spinjitsu Burst and destroys the Skull of Hazador. The reawakened army is destroyed, and Vangelis is arrested and removed from power. In his place, Vanya is crowned as the new Queen of Shintaro. The loss of Vangelis and the end of his mining operations forces Harumi to rely on smugglers and criminals to continue creating the Vangstone army. A group of convicts escape Cryptarium prison, and the authorities hire the bounty hunter Ronin to capture them. After discovering the Uncharted Island, he decides to employ the remaining prisoners to masquerade as Wojira by terrorizing the Keepers and tricking them into giving up their riches. Later, Misako and Wu join an expedition to the island and are captured by the Keepers who believe that they are after the Storm Amulet. The ninja embark on a rescue mission of their own, but are also captured. The islanders intend to sacrifice Jay as a final attempt to appease the fake Wojira. After discovering the deception, the ninja rescue Jay from the criminal base and apprehend Ronin and the convicts. Meanwhile, Kalmar discovers the real Wojira's prison, and after securing the Wave Amulet, he begins work to reawaken the Serpent. His attempts to create disturbances that causes Nia to lose control of her powers. With the help of Maya, the ninja's investigation leads them to Merlopia. 
Exploiting their presence, Kalmar kills Trimar and takes the throne of Merlopia by blaming the ninja for the assassination. Benthamar helps the ninja escape and they clash with Kalmar for possession of the storm amulet, but he is ultimately successful in awakening Wojira. He then leads an attack on Ninjago City, but Wojira kills him after Benthamar breaks his control over the serpent. Nia is forced to merge with the ocean just like her ancestor in order to defeat Wojira, but her actions are remembered by her friends and family. Devastated, the ninja go their separate ways yet again, and Benthamar becomes king of Merlopia. Because of the ninja's absence and inactivity, the newly elected mayor named Ulysses Trustable forms his own team of ninja, dubbed the New Ninja. They are tasked with fighting crime in Ninjago City with minimal property damage and even capture Pythor. One year later, Lloyd, Kai, Cole, Zane, and Jay reunite to investigate another shipment of Venstone where they butt heads with the new ninja. Nia regains her memories and seeks to reunite with her friends. The ninja reluctantly decide to break Asphira out of prison and steal her staff in order to drain Nia's powers and return her to human form. The ninja's actions catch the attention of the new ninja, who arrests them while Asphira is contacted by Harumi, who invites her, Pythor, Vangelis, and other rivals of the ninja to form the Council of the Crystal King. Meanwhile, Nia and Dareth break the ninja out of prison so they can investigate the council. It goes poorly, and Lloyd is captured by Harumi. The Crystal Council destroys the monastery and sees the golden weapons, which they use to restore the Overlord to a corporeal form. Lloyd escapes and meets up with the ninja who have stolen back the bounty from the police. With his army finally ready, the Overlord begins his attack on Ninjago and turns the citizens, including the new ninja, into crystal zombies. The ninja join forces with Garmadon, and together they gather as many survivors as they can and reach out to other allies for help. The Crystal Council launches their attack while Lloyd and Garmadon confront the Overlord, who reveals that he was responsible for Garmadon's corruption. Harumi realizes that the Overlord was also responsible for the death of her parents and joins Lloyd and Garmadon alongside not only the Ninja and the Resistance, but the army of Shintaro, the Merlopians, the Keepers, the Serpentine, and other surviving citizens who heard the Ninja's calls and came to help. The Venstone army is destroyed, and the Crystal Council and the Overlord are defeated, but Kai, Cole, Jay, and Zane lose their powers and the Golden Weapons return to their place of origin. In the aftermath, Ninjago City rebuilds, and the ninja's friends and families help them rebuild the monastery of Sminjitsu. A while later, Kai, Cole, Jay, and Zane go on separate vacations, but they each face a confrontation that allows them to regain their elemental powers. In the realm of Imperium, a girl named Anna creates a device called a Photok, which is able to generate physical creatures. Her invention gains the attention and favor of Dr. LaRoe, who takes her to Imperium's advanced systems laboratory. But after discovering that Imperium exploits dragons for their powers and their intention to weaponize her Photok device, Anna refuses to work for LaRoe, which gains the disapproval of her parents and the rest of the kingdom. Back in Ninjago, a boy named Eren grows up wishing he could become a ninja. But a cataclysmic event, which comes to be known as the Merge, combines several realms, including Ninjago and Imperium, into one. The chaos causes the ninja to become separated into different locations. The Imperium begins to use the chaos and uncertainty of the merged realms to expand the regime by hunting more dragons. Lloyd and Kai reunite at the Monastery of Spinjitsu and discover that there are other realms trying to merge with their reality. Kai decides to learn more about the realms while Lloyd stays behind to protect the remains of Ninjago. Several years later, the inhabitants from each realm now coexist with one another, and the ninja are presumed dead. Eren and Anna, now known as Sora, work together after the merge separated them from their parents. They come across a young dragon named Ryu, who escaped from Imperium. The three of them are saved by Lloyd, who discovers that Eren taught himself Spinjitsu, and that Sora has an elemental power of technology. Together, they reunite with Kai and Nia, and they head to Imperium to free the imprisoned dragons. They also reunite with Zane, who has remained in an Imperium monastery that leads them back to the monastery of Spinjitsu. Infuriated by the ninja's actions, the ruler of Imperium, Empress Beatrix, begins plans to retaliate. And that was my summary of every canon event in the Ninjago timeline from 2011 to the summer of 2023. If you're confused on where I got the dates, I based it on the way Star Wars has its own calendar system. Since Ninjago doesn't have a dating system of its own, I made one for the time being, and the video for that is on my channel. A special thanks goes to the Ninjago wiki page. Their timeline helped out a lot. If there were things you thought that I left out in this video, leave it in the comment section or look at the more extensive timeline on the wiki page. 
I might do an update of this next year, like how Star is explained does his, if I'm in the mood. But anyway, that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!